Hello, so here I am again from my last talk, which would be on 3D printing in orthopedics. When I told my nephews that are really into technology that I was going to give a talk about 3D printing in Israel, they were like, are you crazy? You don't know that much about 3D printing? And Israel is, is the startup nation that has so much technology, you'd be making a fool of yourself. And so I have to be honest that I'm not an expert on 3D printing, something that I started recently, but I'm very excited about and I wanted to share what I've learned so far with you guys and I hope this is not too basic for you. So the first thing is how to begin. And I'd like to acknowledge my mentor, who is Bruno Gobato. He's a surgeon, orthopedic surgeon from Brazil, from the South. He knows a lot about 3D printing. If you want to learn a little bit about 3D printing, I recommend that you follow him on LinkedIn. And also he has an account on Instagram. And he also has a course on Udemy, which is free. and has more than five hours about 3D printing in the basics. And I have to be honest that I learned a lot with him. And I'm sure you'll be able to learn a lot with him if you choose to do this course. I bought a 3D printer for myself. The one that I bought is a Chinese 3D printer called Ender Free. It's pretty cheap. And it's, uh, the 3D printing world is a lot do it yourself. So you have to, you get the, the, the printer, it's not assembled. You have to do a lot by yourself. And to do this, you'll find a lot of information on the internet. So YouTube has tons of tutorials about the printer itself, about how to prepare data for 3D printing. It has forums on Facebook as well. So this is a time that I had a problem with my, my 3D printer. It jammed, as you can see in the pictures. I posted on a Facebook forum, and after two hours, people were telling me how to solve the problem, and it really worked. So the internet has been, can be really helpful if you want to do 3D printing. So after I bought my printer, at first I did some stuff that I just for fun, just to understand the 3D printer. This is a skull, a small drawer, Groot from the Guardians of the Galaxy. And it was really interesting for me to, to learn how to do 3D printing before I actually went to orthopedics. So I want to say you that 3D printing is important, but more important than 3D printing is 3D technology. There are a lot of softwares that you can use. And even if you don't print the, what you're studying, just looking at it in, the, in some software can be really helpful. So what can 3D technology help you? It can help in education, in surgical planning, in surgical guides, and also in custom-made implants. This is a time-lapse video of me printing a hip of a patient. This is a time-lapse of eight hours printing, and you can see that how, how well the printer prints, even uh, not, a, not a professional printer as the one that I have. You can get some pretty good results. So I feel like education is the easier, is the easiest goal of 3D printing. I've been, uh, t I usually do CT scans of my FAI patients, and now I've been printing all the hips of their patients, and I give them to, it to them. It can be really helpful for them to understand the pathology, because explaining what the FAI is, both to the patients and to residents, can be really hard. So when they look at the model in their hands, I think it's really interesting for them to understand what they would do. And for me, it's, a, it's good to understand what I would do and what I will correct during surgery. 3D printing can also be helpful in surgical planning, especially if in, in difficult procedures as a periacetabular osteotomy. This is a case from Pruno Gobato. You can see also that you can take out the femur, look at just the pelvis, and then you can plan the osteotomies, and you can even plan how you're going to correct the patient after you do the osteotomy. So this is something that I really want to research. I've been looking into this with him, so maybe I'll do a research paper on this topic, specific topic. You can use it for surgical guide as well. Bruno Gobat is a shoulder surgeon, so he's using a case that he, he's planning where to put the, the K-wire to do a total joint for the shoulder, and he can do specific guides for the patient. Uh, this is a case of mine, and then I'll be uh, operating soon with a tumor uh, surgeon that I, that I usually work with. It's an osteomosteoid of the femoral neck, and we're planning how to do a surgical guide to guide us to do the drilling in the right spot. You can use for surgical planning as well, just printing the, the case itself. This is a revision case. And you can plan beforehand using the surgical trials where you're going to put the cup and the augments. And you can see how the, the, the planning that we did resembles a lot what we found during surgery. 3D printing implants, it's a, it has a lot of future. So this is a case that we're planning 3D and we wanted to do a custom-made prosthesis. It's a patient with huge osteolysis. And you can see that we can take out the, the implants using 3D technology and print the pelvis itself. We're having some problems now in Brazil with our Anvisa, which is our FDA, so the, thing, the, the government institution that regulates uh, implants, because they, they feel like for each 3D printing implant, we would need one authorization. So this has been a really 
a bureaucratic process. So I don't have any cases done by this. This one has been uh, uh, waiting already for six months for the surgery. And I'll show some cases of some friends of mine that did. So this is a tumor guy that I work with. He's done uh, custom made. This is a case of a scapula osteosarcoma. You can even see this huge lesion. And you can see he did a 3D custom made scapula with a reverse shoulder arthroplasty of it. And you can see it resembles really well the patient anatomy. They use the other side to mirror the, the scapula of the patient. And you can see here a really good function of the shoulder uh, with elev complete elevation of the patient, both active and passive with the custom made implant. Here a patient that had uh, an open fracture and he lost his, completely lost his talus during the accident. And he also, my friend, did a, a custom made tal talus for him. And what you can find in the literature, there's a great increase in orthopedics and 3D printing in PubMed. You can see an exponential increase in the, name, in the number of, of papers lately. And this is a really interesting paper showing uh, using uh, finite elements and showing that if we did the femur uh, with the de if it, uh, metal density is specific to the patient's femur, in theory, you have a 75% reduction in stress shooting for the patient. So showing that custom implants have a, a big, um, can have a great impact in the patient. This is a recent revision paper from the JALS journal showing 3D printed specific guides for hypertroplasty. So you can have guides to give you the, the right place to do the femoral neck osteotomy, and especially for to have a good position of the acetabular component in the pelvis, which we all know would lead to better results in total hip replacement. This is another study showing custom acetabular cage, custom made for 24 pages, patients in massive loss after revision cases. They have a follow-up of at least two years. They have a big, big increase in the clinical outcomes and just in the case of loosening. And this is another uh, paper showing the uh, composite of the custom-made implant using bioceramics as well and with a vascularized fibula. It's a small case series, just 10 cases. They have a follow-up of just one year, but all patients are alive with an increase in the clinical outcomes and showing integration in imaging of the implants. So you can see that they did some really big cases with uh, almost uh, changing the whole shaft of the femur and basically changing the whole proximal tibia. So really complex cases with good results. So we all think this is very promising. Bioprinting is something that will come in the future. Israel is really in the, in the ahead of this, of this technology. They, you already printed a, a heart using 3D printing. And I think uh, this has a lot of future in, in, in orthopedics, especially when you think about cartilage lesions and bone lesions. Maybe you someday you'll be able to just print a femoral head if a patient has a problem. But this is a way in the ahead in the future. Virtual reality is something that it's going to be really important in the future, I think, especially for education. In the left, you can see a module where you um, do training of an anterior hip uh, using 3D technology. And on the right, it's, uh, it's a startup from Brazil where they use uh, virtual reality to treat, uh, to teach patients, uh, to teach students about anatomy of any place. This is an example of the heart and you can actually enter the heart and see the the valves and everything, it's really interesting. Augmented reality is also in the future. This is a, vi a video from the internet. You can see the patient, the, the doctor, using both augmented reality and the, and, and the HoloLens and using it to plan the surgery. And even during the surgery, he can look at the patient and see if he's doing what he, he thinks he's trying to do. And he's bringing also the CT and the MRI, MRI imaging to the face of the patient to make sure that the, he's doing what he thinks he's doing. So this is really, really something that we should look for in the future. So this is the end of my presentation and the end of my participation in this, this meeting. I would like to thank Udi again for the, the invitation. I'm really sorry that I couldn't come, but I'm def definitely looking forward to come back to Israel in the future for future meetings. Thank you very much. Todaraba.